You don't close the borders, monitor them, put systems. You're going to end up with a lot of illegal people. And that becomes a problem because the issue is not whether people from other countries can come to South Africa or not. No, that's not the issue. Uh, the issue is when people come to South Africa, they must come in through proper channels and legally because if they don't, you end up having people in your population that you can't account for. So that's, that's the whole point. Maile says when it comes to the economic interest of this country, South Africans should come first. The interest, the economic interest of South Africans takes precedence. The government must protect the economic interest of South Africans. And in saying that, it doesn't mean that we don't like others and all that. Yeah, so what he's referring there is referring to this idea of some of the elites in South Africa who always um, refer to South Africans as xenophobic when they start raising these issues of some of the illegal migrants, the behavior of some of them, their lawlessness. And so he, he wanted to make it clear to them that corporate media is one of them who pushing this stuff. This inspections. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this afternoon, Dadendo, for on SABC News. Just talk to us about what informed this uh, inspections. No, thanks very much, uh, Tsepo. Uh, we are here as home affairs just to ensure that we are inspecting all the business, the hospitality. So we have seen that we are having an alarming number of foreign nationals who are actually working in South Africa who are uh, undocumented who are actually contravening the Immigration, Immigration Act, Section 38. And how many were arrested? The last report that we got, three were arrested, illegal immigrants. No, since from Monday up until yesterday, we arrested about eight. As we speak, we have documented them, even magistrates has confirmed for their deportation. Now they have been uh, taken to Lindela yesterday, uh, they will be deported to their countries. Eight have been ar uh, arrested and with uh, five employers has been charged where we have uh, they paid the sum of 25,000. And um, those restaurants, and many of these people who are in those restaurants that are people who would vote for a DA, they all hire these illegal migrants and they did not, they weren't paid the minimum wage. They, went, they were paid below minimum wage because they, if you're illegal, so you don't have ID, you can register for um, work safety, uh, you can register for maternity leave, you, you just don't have any rights. Um, so they've been engaging in a policy of wanting to uh, reduce those minimum standard workplace rights standards. And the way they've done it was that to allow these illegal migrants to do nothing about it and not even to oppose these illegal migrants when they were in opposition with the ANC throughout the years uh, because these illegal migrants were benefiting their voters who own businesses because they would hire them uh, and pay them cash instead of register them through the labor. And when they rate it and to be uh, checked at workplace, then it's when these issues arose that they were actually hiring these illegal migrants. They were providing them with the minimum wage because they're illegals. If you're illegals, you cannot, you're illegals. You don't have rights to work. Even if you have a passport that's valid, you don't have rights to work. Um, so coming in and visiting South Africa on a holiday doesn't give you rights to work and to remain in work. That's an illegals. When you start doing that, you are referred as illegals. So these are the, or some of them worse of it is the people smuggling people who are coming, entering South Africa under the name of seeking asylum. Okay, they've passed all the other countries. Uh, South Africa is, is south. You know, it's about 54 uh, countries in South in Africa. So if you go and pass all the other countries to get to the last southern tip country, uh, you can sort of understand that this is not about asylum. This is something else. It's to do with uh, wanting to enter South Africa 
to invade South Africa. The number of all of them that are entering South Africa are um, huge. We saw a lot of them waiting in the border between South Africa and Zimbabwe. They're not all Zimbabwean, to be honest, because they come through and it, because Zimbabwe is another failed state. They come through there so that they can enter South Africa to the border of Zimbabwe and South Africa. Not all of them are Zimbabwean, but they, that's a link because there is the Zimbabwean doesn't have a good governance on their own. So these people are able to enter. So it is a huge problem that the Minister of Home Affairs, I don't think he will address it because if he, the minute he stop the illegals entering South Africa, that means cheap labor um, will end for the sub DA supporter. So he's now releasing all these statistics uh, that of deportation, but deportation is spending taxpayer money. Because it's not going to end. If you don't strengthen the border, if the border are porous, people are going to still enter. You will be deporting people most of the time. It is the policy, is the implementation of that policy that will actually end this onslaught, this invasion of these illegal into South Africa. That is what we're looking for. This is what I haven't seen. The policy that he's released about a couple of weeks ago, it's useless, it's gonna, not going to do anything. It's not, it's actually it's not even going to touch the surface because it doesn't deal with prevention. Prevention, asylum, who gets the asylum? In manner in which will somebody will uh, uh, get the asylum? You cannot pass all these countries and go to South Africa to request asylum by paying people to get there. That's not asylum, first of all. So policy needs to change, okay? So not allowing people to seek asylum in your country is, should be the policy. Even refugee in your country should be a policy. If someone wants to have asylum, there's a lot of embassies in South, in South African embassies, in Africa or anywhere, a person can go there and then they can be assessed. And then, therefore, through assessment, officials then thinking, okay, they are genuine asylum and then help them. But this is not. We know that it's not. It's actually a person and they are who actually pretending to be asylum with a lot of money. And we don't know how they get this money, some of it, okay? And then they started with these illegal businesses. They, by importing illegal products that are not even legal in South Africa, like these chemicals I was talking about the other day. So the community wants the Home Affairs to provide answer about policy. What policy do they have to actually stop this, this invasion? To stop the invasion, what policy? Not to deportation, because deportation is reactive and actually spending more money to deport people. It is about prevention, not about the, oh, okay, people are complaining, six children have died, been killed by illegal migrants in the country. Let me put up a statement and say I've deported X amount of people. But your policy suggests that you want more illegal migrants. The policy, labor policies, that's the one that actually makes me think they want more illegal migrants. And that's why over the years have never actually opposed ANC about this uh borderless South Africa, but they are sent, they want us to think they are centre-right party, to which I say they're not. Uh, South Africa needs a centre-right political party. DA is not the one. It's not the centre-right party. You need a, a party that will actually be more focused on security, national security, safety, uh, strengthening border, and uh, reform, business reform. That is the centre-right party. Usually most centre-right party are mostly focused on that and also, uh, you know, supporting the military and providing more funding to military. I haven't seen anything from DA that suggests to me that they are the true centre that South Africa needs that's been so elusive. South Africa has been actually having these left political party that comes with different names. But when you look at them, all of them are Pan-Africanists. Pan-Africanists is a horrible idea. Uh, I don't know. I have not seen any party that in Africa that actually uh, 
the government is pan-Africanist and they actually have a very good functioning economy, functioning, um, uh, you know, society based on that ideology. It's a scam. It should be taken as such. So all of them come around, they come around with this pan-Africanist. It's a catchphrase they use. They're all left leaning and we are lacking a center-right party. We are, don't have a center-right. The center-right, it is their ideology. It is what they are and they actually work to address the issues of the entire population, which is South Africa. The DA, it is, has been there for 20, for 30 years seeing this. That's why they still are around 20%. I mean, I said to you in the other time that, you know, ANC is able to win, but you can ask another question that how can ANC that we think has failed in so many levels was able to actually govern South Africa for so many years without any opposition, without anyone else, uh, take another party challenging them. You can see that the problem is actually also a opposition, the lack of a uh, strong opposition that actually with a policy that actually would be more uh, inclusive and an alternative government. They haven't been able to do that. They are there now. You can see the stuff they're doing now. Even now with the governance, we've been in GNU, you can see that now creating all this uh, uh, division, all of this division. You don't want that. You want the government to govern for everybody, to have, to implement the laws, to implement uh, policy bills that are, are in in law. We bill a bill, they oppose the bill a bill, but it's no longer a bill, now. it's a law. It's been signed into law. And is the bill that was actually uh, signed was actually put into parliament many years ago because ANC doesn't govern. They think they're in holiday. Or they're in holiday all the time. They're celebrity. They don't govern. That's why it's taken so long to just have one bill that makes sense. So there's a lot of problems that within the opposition in South Africa that they are been there as a composite seeing all this bad policy. One of them is porous border. So if you are not, uh, you, you don't challenge uh, a, a, your opponent on these policies for over the years, I think you agree with these policies. And now because you see that the, the mood within the population has shifted, you want to be seen as doing something. But in fact, you're the biggest problem. Biggest problem is you. Um, because uh, going away with minimum standard is actually allowing all the illegals. You can see even in Cape Town how many of them are there and how many of them have actually destroyed Cape Town. When you just, if you want to just drive a little bit, uh, say 10 kilometers from this Cape Town city, all of those 10 cities and all of those informal settlement, a lot of them that lives there are illegal migrants. Uh, some of them, they've been told to vacate uh, a place in Cape Town because, you know, the visitors who uh, visit in Cape Town, they can see it. They can see all that. And uh, now they they have realized that that actually it's they it's not safe for the visitors, uh, tourists. And now they've moved them. They went to the court and asked them to vacate the place. Um, but... This is their problem. This is why they want to uh, move away from minimum wage. Um, you cannot say that you want to oppose Bella law, the Bella law, something that's already a law. You know, um, that just tells me that you want to create another government. All these years, ANC has allowed... Uh, privatization of apartheid. When I say privatization of apartheid, pri apartheid was just removed from the constitution, but it was privatized. This is what you're seeing, example of privatization of apartheid. So ANC didn't do much to reform and, and actually enforcing the law. Nothing. They meant to actually keep what was good, make everything better for the people who were left behind due to these um, exclusive policies that were there for decades, but they have not. So, I don't know. We'll see.
Um, so thank you guys for listening this video. Yeah, this one here is a short one and nice and hopefully I'll put another one yes tomorrow and have a lovely day. Bye for now. Johannesburg Economic Development MMC also weighed in. We have our old spaza shops which uh, when growing up were owned, you know, for example in Middle and Zone 10 where I grew up, Abo VRS. You know, we knew that those father shops are solely owned by our, 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 our South African, you know, business people. But today we learn that those father shops have been taken over by um, foreign nationals. So that is the first concern that came out strongly from this engagement with our community. The second issue is the issue of uh, finance uh, funding. You know, uh, there were commitments uh, which were made apparently during COVID-19 by the national government uh, that um, spaza shops owners and business people were going to be assisted with funding. Community members voiced their disgruntlement. I'm unable to open because there's intimidation and harassment from the grouping that has decided to throw out the foreign nationals out of Gopilo. Which I accept they have left, but I don't understand what's the reason for you not to function and operate now. My year also is the township in Soweto to hear from the community, especially those who are involved in small businesses. He promised that government will look into the issue of funding their businesses.